Hey there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome, thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're gonna build upon the last few, which is where we've been looking at some licks from this pattern that I call the house pattern. So I'm gonna assume you kind of been keeping up a little bit. Real quick, let's run through the five different ideas that we have gone through now. The first one was in the first video where I sort of described the house pattern and I showed this was a very simple idea, but uh, it does happen to be effective as well. So I'm gonna include that as lick number one, but let's run through the licks really quick and then I'll show you how I put them together into a solo. The first lick goes like this. One, two, three, four, one. And of course we have two of those bends that would be shallow to the half step over the four and the five chord and would go major or a full step over the one chord. The second lick that we did goes like this. One, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So again, those first two bends would be the, that would be the minor alternative. The third lick we did, one, two, three, So here we have three different places where we could go to the, the minor sound. And remember, sometimes you use the major sound in one measure, but the minor sound in another. You've always got to be listening that way. Now the fourth lick, uh, we added in some uh, a blue note. Two, three, four. We also have that tweedly, which I really dig. So again, we have two spots where we would do the half step bend. Right, to get that sound over the four and five chord. And last, we utilized what I call the big bend. One, two. Okay, now, I wanna be clear about something, and I, I talked about this earlier, which is that that first bend could start earlier. I could go one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, Right, I could do it earlier. This bend doesn't change for the four and the five chord, it stays the same. This bend could be minor if we started over the one chord, but by the time we get here, we're over the four or the five chord. Now, there's a funny thing about the five chord. This, this note, if we bend it a whole step, we get over the four chord a very, very tense note. It would be a C sharp, which is a major seventh against the minor seventh in the D seven chord. That will, I can just about promise you that nobody's gonna like that sound. However, over the E chord, that C sharp is actually the sixth of the chord. Now, you might actually prefer the sound of that C sharp against the E chord. Some people do. I left it in one of the licks of my solo to show you the sound. It's not as common, but I don't want to say it never happens because it certainly does. So I did want to point that out. It's a little bit of a gray area, <laughs> right? It's one of those things where you get to make your choice. It's a stylistic thing for you. So why don't we first, let's take a quick listen to how I put all these together into a 12 bar solo. So let me show you my thought processes on that so that you can get an idea of how this was gonna go. So the first one I started out, was, uh, out with was lick three. I just think that has a nice melody. It just sits really well. I used it in its entirety. I didn't have to change anything. With lick two, or the second lick, I used lick two. Didn't really have to change anything there either. 
over the four chord. I used lick four, obviously made those adjustments to handle um, those, those half steps where I needed them to get the minor bend instead of the major bend. Now, I wanted to use lick one next, but it doesn't start until the uh of one, and I wanted a little, just a little something in there. So I took a little part of lick three and stuck it in there. Now, what makes that cool is that it's, it, it sort of adds this little, little poke, <laughs> if you will. One, two, three, a four, a one, a two, a three. Right, so you hear it makes this just little, it just added a little bit on there. And with the rest on the downbeat right before lick one actually starts, it's a really cool sound. So I wanted to point that out. Now then, I wanted to do lick five at this point, and I thought it would sound good, but I didn't want to wait again all the way until after beat one. That would have been a big open space. I'd already used the technique of throwing in a couple of extra notes, and I thought, oh, you know what I'll do? is I'll run, I'll do that longer, big bend, and I'll start it earlier, and we'll see how it works out. As it turns out, it works out famously. So I'm gonna start way back on beat, uh, the uh of beat three. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one. So I held it for an extra beat, and then I'm gonna finish out the lick. Uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, and one, uh, two, uh, three. And notice that I did make all of those half step bends because I'm over the five and the four chord. And this whole thing normally would have started on the uh of one, would have finished out a little differently, but I think it works great. In fact, all things considered, I might use it starting a little bit earlier like this more often than I would use it starting later. As, as I got more and more into it, I kind of dug it this way more and more. At that point, Again, I wanted to have, I needed a little something, right? I needed the end of a lick, not so much the beginning. And I really like this ending of lick four. Okay, so I stuck the ending of lick four in there to fill that out. And then I have almost all of lick three except the last note. And this is where I went ahead and left that major bend in there even though it's the E chord. Now, when I play it, my ear really naturally wants me to keep that a little bit lower, so I probably didn't get that bend up to pitch. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. Uh, that's something that you'll have to play with on your own, but the only thing that I changed about this is I just ended it on the A because that's the start of the next 12 bars of the form. I didn't see any reason to, I'll say, keep going. It was an A, an A chord, that made sense, right? So there's no reason to really add anything to it. Now there's one other little kind of cool thing that, that I might have done and, and I sort of thought as I went back to it. Um, if you look at the end of lick five, where I had sort of this alternate you know, it's an alternate version. I put alt to mean this is an alternate, you know, it's a different beat that I started on. Had I ended, instead of that, had I done and gone down to the six, the six would have been the third of that chord. My ear wanted to change that last note to the six, the 11th fret on the third string, but I didn't want to change the lick, okay? So my ear, again, wanted to hear the 11. So I'm just telling you that. In case, if you're a more advanced player and you're going through this and you've got experience with this stuff, you might be like, yeah, I dig that too. I'm gonna do that. Great, knock yourself out. And so that's just, that's just kind of how all these things go together. That's some of my thought processes and how I put this stuff together. It could be done a hundred different ways. You just, they're, they're, the sky's the limit with this stuff. There's so many different ways. You could easily do a hundred of these and never repeat yourself. It's just kind of the way it works. All right, so uh, what I'll do is I will give you one more opportunity to play it along with me. Uh, again, I'm gonna leave downloads and all that good stuff near this. I hope you'll give it a try for yourself. Again, if you haven't been keeping up, if you haven't learned the licks that I've given out over the last several days, this would be a challenge. 
But if you have learned those licks, this would be fairly straightforward and pretty easy. If you can play the licks, you can play the solo. Let's give it a whirl and uh, I'll see you soon. Take care.